Hello and welcome to the program Deal Platform. This is a show that showcases the lifestyle of individuals, of our people who have shown exemplary uh, leadership, who has been in position and they've you know, actually done well. And today on the show, this is the very pilot show. Let me say that. This is my debut on the show. And I'm glad because I'm starting on a very good note. You know, the Bible does say it's that if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? And that is why the foundation has to be strong. And today I have with me the very first family of the Christian Association of Nigeria. I have them with me right here. I will be having a discussion you know, that has to do with you know, the pros of the cons of living a good life and having an exemplary leadership uh, activities. Join me as a welcome to the program, the Reverend Dr. Samson Olashupo Adeniyi Ayokoli, the current president of Nigeria, and he is uh, also the, uh, now the former president of the Nigerian Baptist Convention. Also, I have the Amona in Israel, the very wife of our president, of our, our reverend. I have Pastor Mrs. Deborah Uluatunyi Ayokoli, who is the wife of uh, Reverend Dr. Samson Olashoko Ayokonle, you know, right here uh, with us on the show. It's good to have you uh, join us, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. And Mark, I'm so glad to have you on the show. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, yes, uh, I'm, I'm glad I'm um, having uh, this interview with you. Yes, we've had you know, several uh, interviews where we've discussed uh, a different uh, thing that has to do with your leadership position. Uh, but today we are taking a quite uh, different turn. We want to know who uh, the man uh, your colleague is and you know, has it been. And I'm going to start with, uh, let's start from uh, when he was young. When he was young. When uh, uh, daddy was, uh, that was a young, very young boy. I know I want to uh, hear that story of how uh, you met mommy. Let me start from there. Uh, so that you can be relaxed a bit. Uh, how, how did how did the journey of you know meeting mommy start before we get to this point? Well, uh, you talked about how when I was young. When I was young, I was born to a village called Alausha, Jabalausha village, along. Iware Road, Akiman Iware Road, uh, in the, in Oyo province of Oyo State, over 64 years ago, and uh, growing up in the village was survival of the fittest. Also, very task because uh, you have to wake up very early in the morning to follow your parents to the, to the farm, and you remain in the farm until night when the, the sun is setting. And you take wood, carry wood and other uh, agricultural products home to, for your mothers to, to prepare for the night. It was a very tasking life. Went to school, only an Baptist Central Day School in the village. Uh, and uh, from there, moved to Oyo Town to pursue my secondary education. First of all, going to secondary modern school, early secondary commercial modern school. But I was kicked out of that school because after one year, when we did the exam, we our more than one had six six arms and with over two hundred students in that arm. So I led in the exam, and the, the teacher felt that my dad was wasting my time sending me to that school because the intelligence 
was more than those who were my classmates. The president came second, came far distant second to me. So he called one of my cousins, he asked whether I had anybody uh, that was related to me in the school. I said yes. Went and called one of my cousins and he warned him that I should never be made to return to that school again. I should go to secondary grammar school where I belonged. So my father reluctantly accepted. Not that he didn't want me to go to secondary grammar school, he was looking at the cost of it. And that uh, the, the modern school was cheaper. And after three years, you will go to teachers grade to college, and while there, they will be paying you. So that to him, and there will be automatic employment for you after you finish. So he preferred that. And after I finished my grade two, uh, teacher's grade two college, I'll be able to stand on my own and it will be free. So he didn't want secondary grammar school. But faith delivered me from secondary modern school. And after one year, I had to go take concessional entrance exam to a grammar school where I had my secondary school education. It was during, towards the time of my graduation, that the love story of myself and my wife began. Uh, just saw her one day, uh, I was a private in, uh, in the school at the final year, and I was also coordinating the student Christian movement of Oranya Grammar School. So these ones that are junior, we, we were like senior brothers and fathers to them, taking care of them. And uh, so that brought relationship with a lot of them. And we never had the mind of having closer relationship. But that day, I was as a private in, char in, in, in charge of time and water uh, for the entire school. It was my duty to make sure that all the students went for siesta at the right time and jingle the bell for them to wake up at the right time, march them to the prep class at the right time. So after I have done Make sure that all the students went for the siesta after school. And as I was about to climb in my bed, I saw that lady going to female hostel. So I bad. And that was when the inspiration came that that is going to be your wife. I resisted it. I went to bed and uh, when the the odd was strong, I called my friend I said, as a prefect. I don't want to disgrace myself with any of these uh, young ladies. But this is what I saw. I've never had this feeling. There was a lady in my life before. So, and he encouraged me not to take it for granted. Because that urge may never come again, and you may miss it. Anyway, by that time, I was already over 20, because I didn't start school early. So I was already over 20, so it wasn't that I was too young to think of. But in terms of achievement, I felt that I hadn't made anything. But when my friend convinced me that I should first of all make an attempt. You speak to her. I say, well, what of you she doesn't accept? And that will be a ridicule to me. <laughs> she said, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Let's see whether God is in it or not. So one day I met with her and called her. I said to him, I have an assignment for you. You go and read. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 
can come and give me what you can understand from that. I said, yes. After that, for about two months, I didn't see her again. <laughs> Anytime she was to meet me, she will take another, <laughs> another route. Until one day, suddenly, she didn't prepare to meet me. I, we jumped. And I said, I gave you assignment about two months ago. You are running away. And uh, she understood the, 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 the message. And she says, oh, she will be praying about it. Uh, that was how the story of the relationship began. And uh, not too long I graduated out of school because it was towards my, the time of my finishing from five that that happened. Graduated and uh, up and down, up and down, break because of lack of contact, etc. But the, the journey, the Lord sustained until I finished my university education and we were able to come together. Oh. All right, thank, thank you, Daddy. Uh, Mommy, how, how are you convinced that he's the right man for you? He's, he has told us, you know, I began from his own end now. What happened? Let's, let's hear the side of the story. Like he has said, when he came to me with that First Corinthians chapter 13, I understood quite well. No wonder you didn't Yeah, that's the reason why I was running away from him. Because it's all about love. Mm -hmm. So I was praying. I was praying. And one day God gave me a revelation that I was mistakenly taken for somebody and I was locked up in the uh, prison. And they were asking for the person who can come and bail me out. My mother came and she said. refused. Holy self. My mother came, they refused that. My father came, they refused that, until this man came. And immediately they saw him, they said, ah, no, 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 let's release this uh, lady for this man. And that was one. God gave me some other convictions, in fact, about our future. That that man you are looking about will be my servant, my minister, who will carry the gospel even uh, in Nigeria and in abroad. So since then, I've been looking at him as somebody who will come out one day and say, ah, God is calling me to be a minister of his. Now, that, that, that's a good one. Now, all right, let, let, let's, let's move forward uh, a bit now. When you got married and uh, daddy had to you know, study abroad at Liverpool Open University, how were you, were you coping? How were you coping? in a home with the children and it was away in uh, the United Kingdom. I, I, I studied in two places. I studied at Liverpool home and I studied at the University of Liverpool. Okay. Oh, when God uh, revealed to us that he has to travel out to study because he saw himself with the white people and the one of them was giving him and he provides PhD certificates onto him. So we really knew what God was saying that he has to travel out. So we agreed together. Though we agreed together that we'll be going. But when he traveled, in fact the first day we came back from the airport, I entered into our room and saw the phone call ah this man. For the next four years, yeah, I'll be the only one who's sleeping here. So I started weeping. In fact, I wept and wept and wept that I became sick. And some of our deacons in our church came to pray with me and they said, Ah, mommy, enough is enough now. Shall be you agree together? God told you that this man we go. So you better make up your mind and uh, come out of this shock of this thing. You know, it should not be a shock to you. My principal then also, because I was a class teacher then in the secondary school, she called me and she said, ah, you still have some advantages though, than we, when our husband traveled in the past. Before you will hear from them, in fact, maybe around three months to the time he has traveled, before and you have to travel to Lanlate to be able to get the network to speak to them. But today, 
you can pick up your phone whatever you want to use your money for keep it for the card the calling card so that you'll be able to swim with it so i made up my mind though it wasn't easy because then he has to struggle to get his own school fees during morning shift afternoon shift evening shift that because there is no sponsor for him so he has to pay for everything so i was selling some other things selling pure water puff puff selling she butter and some other things like that in order to make up the finances now god saw us too though it wasn't easy all right thank you so much for sharing that part and uh, people can know that today uh the lord is faithful yeah. to his word all right honey we need a little of your experience you know when you were a teacher and an administrator and how was you know the life being a teacher and administrator you know, before eventually you know came into uh, the full ministry how was the life being an administrator well my experience is as teacher an administrator made it clear to me that serving humanity is ministry and it's an opportunity to change lives for better. Uh, I was committed to my teaching assignment and when I was posted so I started my teaching work after my secondary school education. So I was posted to a, a, a modern school where I was teaching mathematics. And I made up my mind that I would face that work squarely. And uh, many of the students today became big people. And they were always remember. I, I will not miss any class during that period. When I was posted to two other secondary schools, when I was then my youth service in Plateau State, I was also given mathematics to teach and economics. I, the, during after school hours, I will gather the students together in Bible study. I, it gave me opportunity of reaching out to many students to influence them for Christ. Though by that time I hadn't received the full uh, call into full gospel ministry, but I saw myself as a minister of the gospel through my profession anywhere I was. So the same thing when I came to teach in Ohio State. Uh, it was an opportunity to influence life, to change lives. Starting Bible, city wide Bible study, and uh, many of the people, members of that Bible study, young people today, and some of them are professors, Christian professors. Some of them are pastors like me, overseers of churches. Uh, the, the, I met somebody today in the medical ministry, medical doctor, who was referring to how we brought them up in Bible study when they were very young. I couldn't recognize him again because he was very young at that time, in the 80s, when I knew him. Uh, but, so it's a, it was an opportunity for me to reach out to people, to influence them for Christ in the way of the Lord. And as an administrator, you know that you attend to many needs of the people, though through their fires, through their fires, and through the presence of some of them to seek one help or the other. I made up my mind that I wouldn't allow fires of people to be on my table till the other day. And the fires came, I attended to them. And uh, through that, I, I remember one lady was seeking employment to State House Clinic and I was a recruitment officer and this woman, this lady, 
with her action, I knew that she was not born again. She wasn't. See, she, she did, gave so many signs, body language to tell me what she was dead. And she saw that I wasn't looking at that. Later she felt that, what, what, what does this man want, really? So she came out and told me plainly, Officer, I, I'm not, I'm a very generous person. Whatever you want me to give you, I will give you. I can give you my body. I need this job. And I told her, look at my table. You saw a giant Dix annotated reference by me there. I'm a practicing Christian. I do do that. I'm working on your file. When the due process is complete, then you will have your job. But you don't need to be selling your body. You debase yourself. When you do that, you are worth more than that. So you say, come. When I say come, you come on the day I've told you to come. Because I know that actions must have been completed over your, over your job. And that was the right way I influenced many people when I was in the administrative uh, service of the, of the government. So I saw it as an opportunity. Many people, when I was in recruitment department, uh, recruitment unit, I was uh, of the personnel, I was able to bring into employment through favorable recommendation to the chairman of the commission. So it was an opportunity to touch lives. All right, my mommy, let's take uh, two pictures together now quickly. Uh, I want us to take a look at you being a prayer warrior. Yeah. Do we have, okay, are we looking towards you know, having a ministry in that? That's the first one. Now, Danny has you know, recorded successes in different ways, which are quite evident. You know, everyone can see God has been quite faithful. I want to enumerate. Uh, those parts where uh, you contributed to this ministry because you know the the cliche that says that for every successful man there is you know, a wonderful woman somewhere i want you to enlighten us so that we can learn from it you know wife of men of god can know that you know there is a lot of work for them to do well indeed prayer is the weapon to achieve to combat the gimmicks of the devil, but to receive from God. And some other things that prayer can do for you. <clears throat> but at the same time, if you are in today's uh, rain work, it has become a ministry already. It has become part of me from the time when I was growing. Because my mother faced a lot of uh, problems with a marital life. So she has taught us to commit everything to prayers. So I grew up in that wise. And later, God was telling me that if, you, if this man will have to be successful in life, you have to stand by him and stand in the gap always, committing everything into God's hands. And I used to be sensitive in the spirit. So whenever I was led by the spirit to pray, wherever I am, I begin to pray. Whatsoever thing that I have to commit to God's hand concerning the ministry, I go into prayer and fasting. Many times, nobody will tell me, the Holy Spirit will tell me that we have to do this. And as you are praying, gradually the Holy Spirit will be telling you, this is the next thing to pray upon. This is what I'm going to do. This man is going for this assignment, be praying towards it. Even before you will get into this assignment, the Holy Spirit will have told me, and in fact the Holy Spirit used to tell me, that you will be called into a higher uh, post or for, for Jesus' Service. services. So, and I will begin to pray. And when, whenever anything, any storm rises up against it, I will just go to the, to God. 
In fact, when he was called as a as a full-time minister, God told me, if you can carry the burden of this ministry on your shoulder, there is nothing you ask from me in the place of prayer that I will not give you. And because this man, I'm taking him higher. And that is that was how God began with us. And day after the step after step, from one level of glory in this ministry to another. And maybe let me interject yes. from here and give you an example of how our prayer real life helped our ministry. And not only our prayer life, our prophetic life. She said, prophetess by God. Yeah. Uh, I was, that was 2012. That was during the, the administration of President Billy Jonathan. We wanted to see all the heads of churches in Nigeria. Uh, or let me say selected heads of churches in Nigeria. We wanted to see us in the lawn. So and I was prepared to go. But mommy, by revelation, so that the journey was going to be difficult. Difficult beyond what our brains can carry. And overnight, mommy woke up and went to pray from 1 o'clock to 4 a.m. So after praying, she came back, she woke me up and said, the journey you are going through this morning is a difficult journey. And uh, God didn't tell me what will happen. But it's a very difficult journey. God woke me up and I've been, been prayer for three hours, speaking in unknown language. And God wants me and you to agree together to, for 10 minutes, praying in unknown language because your, our understanding cannot comprehend what is going to happen. So let's pray together. So we join hands. We spoke in tongues together for 15 minutes and I went, I dressed up. I went for that meeting. On my way coming back from the lawn, we decided that Femi Omani was my, was my PA by that time. Moses was still the person driving. On our way, we, when we were coming back, we decided we were not going to leave the lawn very early for safety. So we left alone the hotel around 8 a.m. when we knew that many people might have been on the road. So we left the airport area, connected the express road to Bumashu. Just at a Yenkori area. Then we saw somebody on the road. Dangling like this, like a madman. So I shouted to the driver, apply the brake, don't overrun him. Don't move around the, the madman. We didn't know that it was an armed robber would go. So as he applied the brake towards where the man is said, point blank with the gun in his hand, pointed the gun to us. Before we could understand anything from the right, from the left, barrages of gunshots. On our vehicle. The tire got bust. I told the driver, reverse. And they were shooting as we were reversing. They were shooting as we were reversing. They put five kilometers away at Jack Bay, all these trailers, and everybody. People with their hands on their head. That some people have got into trouble today. They have met their death. So when we got to where people were, very close to that uh, overhead bridge where we joined the, the express road. People were ready to assist and carry people to hospital from the vehicle. So I came out, then we came out, the driver came out, then I said, ah, what is wrong? Where are the people? Where are the people? I said, which people? 
Was it not your people that they were shooting him? Say, we said yes. Ah, what happened? What is wrong with it? Ah, they were looking for the moon. We said nothing happened to us. One young man, youth copper. He said, who are you, sir? And I said, I'm the president of the Nigerian Baptist Convention. He said, ah. He told Nathan, he said, please pray for me. Pray for me, I'm a sinner. Please pray for me. Pray, pray for me. He was, he was in dread. That how can they shoot you? Just like that, and all of you is wounded. That was the result of the prayer warrior and the prophetess that I, I had near me. I didn't see it. Not that I don't see things at all. But I don't see things regularly. God gave me another gift. Gave me the power of the world, inspiration to deliver sermons, to minister to the lives of people, to minister deliverance. But occasionally, you refuse the lives of the people I'm ministering to for me. But before I see one thing works, my wife can see four times. So and that has really helped my ministry and uh, prayer ministry has really made our faith to grow too strong for to combine bad and incoming problem. When we were facing storms here and there, you were aware. My wife was always saying that the end is in sight. Uh, those things we feel. They will, they will fade away. That we should just keep on trusting God. We just keep on praying. That we, we outlast all those things. And that God did for us. All right, Daddy Ash, briefly, I want you to advise, uh, as the first uh, Christian in Nigeria, I want you to advise uh, ministers of God how they can manage their family and the ministry. I think that's God has been a lot of challenge uh, these days. How the ministers of God can manage their family and the ministry. And well, I want them to know that without the family, there will be no ministry. The two are very important, but the first family, the first thing you have contact with is your family. It is when that is all right that your ministry will be all right. To neglect the, the one of the people you see face to face who live with you on a daily basis and be saying that you are working for God whom you have not seen will not be true knowledge of God. True knowledge of God gives you understanding that God has, is at work in you through these people with which you love body and mind every day let them be in good state take care of them so that jointly your ministry can be taken care of as a baptist i say that my first baptist church is my family then my physical church and when the two go together none will suffer when you put all the things in perspective in the right order Nothing is going to suffer. If you don't put your family in perspective, you alone will struggle for your ministry and you will fail. You alone cannot do the ministry successfully. But when you create a sense of ownership of your ministry, true love for your family, you are close to your family, you have made your family to, to, to believe in that ministry, then all of you, we do it together. It may be you alone they are seen at the center, but uh, all of them will receive the satisfaction that they have contributed positively to uh, the success that people are seeing outside there. So I, I advise the younger ministers not to look down or neglect their families because the boy cannot fly with one wing. It has to use the truth. And uh, we are being in relation. If you are not a man of good relationship with others, you are not a being. 
you are, you are closer to a beast than a human being. Human beings live together in community. It is the animal that can walk away alone. But human beings but live in relationship with the consciousness of being the, the, the consciousness of maintaining good relationship with others. Community of human beings. God Himself is a community, though God is one. He says, Come, let us make man in our own image. And uh, in, in the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. And uh, the Bible says, God, the, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the deep. And then God said, Let there be light. So there is God, the Father, then God, the Word, God said. And then the light came, then the light. God, the light, God, the Spirit. So God is a being in relation. God, I mean, is, is a community, but it's one. And all agree perfectly in one. So this is the way a minister should be to his family. When you are one with your family, then your ministry outside there will be very strong. All right, thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate uh, having this conversation together and uh, mommy thank you so much uh, for joining us the discussion has been uh, with our father in the lord the reverend dr asapsin uh, and our mommy uh, pastor mrs deborah Luatoni and it's been very wonderful right there on the program the platform thank you so much for joining us on this show stay with us only friends